technical difficulties. Dieters, behave. Do not eat that. He took his tefers and chomped a huge hole in my devotional book today, which is super annoying. Hey y'all, it's Allie. Thank you so much for joining me again on my channel. I'm really excited about this video because it's about my fancy pants pen and kind of my thoughts on this particular pen. I have never owned this fancy pants of a pen before. It's a fountain pen. If you haven't used fountain pens, then you may be like, what's the big deal with fountain pens? And I can tell you that too. I started off with Safari. Oh, there's a jet going. Hold on. God bless America. One of the perks of living right next to a Air Force base that trains pilots. <laughs> when I first started planning and figuring out planners, I started in at Filofax a long, long, long time ago. And I can't remember, I think it was pretty, 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 can't talk in this thing. Pretty Shiny Sparkly, I think was the channel name. And she had a beautiful nude Filofax. And then she had this like neon yellow limited color Lamy Safari. At the time we had a pen paradise here in San Antonio up at La Cantera Mall. And I went up there and I wrote with one and I really liked it. And I got, I think I got a white one because they didn't have the neon yellow. And then I found Goulet pens and the rest is history. <laughs> I've been using fountain pens for a while. And the reason is because I write a lot. I write a lot, y'all. I don't know how I went so long in my lifetime. Like I've been using fountain pens for a good, almost, what is it, eight years, I think? It's been a while, but in the, the whole spectrum of my lifetime, it's been fairly recent because I have written for a long, long time. I've, I've always write, I write a lot. I would get hand fatigue a lot as a kid, as a teenager, as a young adult, when I would journal because the ballpoint pens were really tiring to write with. And then I switched to gel, which was fine, but still, you still have a ball in there and it's still creating friction. And so yeah, I really love, love, love journaling with a fountain pen because I can just write and write and write and write and write and my hand doesn't get tired. With that said, there's so many different kinds of fountain pens out there. Everybody has their own concoction of <laughs> their brand and their ink that they loaded up with and all that stuff, the nibs, all that. There's a whole bunch of stuff to learn about with fountain pens. And this video is not really about the basics of the fountain pen nib, all that stuff. There's a whole slew of information on, you know, nibs, converters, all those things. And it's out there. It's on YouTube if you just um, kind of YouTube it. But Angoulet Pens is a great resource for anyone who's new who wants to learn about fountain pens. But this is really just about my special pen that I got recently. And to kind of show you some of the ones that I have, um, but really to focus on this Pilot Vanishing Point in overseas, they call it Capless. And it's the first time I've ever had this kind of pen. And it is dreamy <laughs> so, it's everything they said it would be i do have my own opinions because i did a poll about which nib size and actually this particular pen only has one nib size that it comes with so if you want a finer nib you have to buy the whole nib unit planner rumsey made me pull the trigger for this pen really did i kind of passed the baton and influenced another gal to buy one. She went ahead and did it and she said she loves it. And so I have a feeling I'm gonna love it too because this is a little, it feels a little too smooth. I've never had this smooth. I've, I mean, I have an 18 karat nib, but it's not this smooth. I think I might be buying that extra fine nib unit as well. All that to say, this was a very, very, very special purchase for me. I only did it because I had an extra event. I sing a lot <laughs> in Christmas time. A lot of people will ask me to sing for their different Christmas events. I play guitar too. And I never ask for money. I never ask for money ever because it's my ministry. I want to bless people. And if I say yes, I want it to be a happy, joyful yes out of my heart and not because I'm getting paid. The gift was given to me to sing. And so there's all that. But people do like to bless me monetarily sometimes. This one thing was like an hour away. So that was helpful for gas and stuff. But the other thing that I did, I had two extra events last month. I forgot about that. But the first one, they blessed my socks off and I was 
was like, oh my gosh, David, I can get that pen if if I really wanted it. And he totally told me to get it because he loves he loves it when I can get something that I like because we don't get too often. That's how I got this pen. And it's beautiful. And I'm going to stop gabbing about it so you can see it close up. I will go ahead and put the camera down and then we'll show you what this looks like. What I want to do actually now before going further is show you the unboxing footage that I took um, unboxing this pen. Let me just get this out. This is a limited edition. What does this say? Japanese product dealer. I did, it did come from Japan. It did come earlier than it said it was going to come. This is a pilot vanishing point. It's a decimo, but it's a very special decimo. Maybe it'll say it in the box, but it's called Earth of Water Race, and it's like kind of like, like tortoise shell, which is really pretty. Oh my goodness, I'm kind of nervous. Oh, I'm nervous. Oh wow, that's fancy. I have never purchased a pen this expensive before, but I think it will be a good investment for me. I do write a lot. Oh my goodness. I wish I knew what these things said. Oh wow. It's very pretty and this is the cartridge and I think I might um, empty this out and put other ink in it because you can get way more ink capacity. Oh my goodness. There's like, it is so pretty. What the Hank? Oh, and it's weighted nice. Okay, so here's the issue. I'm really sad that my lens is not working because then I can't like show things to you close up, which is a bummer. Um, it's just my lens is like completely stuck. I could probably put a different lens on this. I really wish I could show it to you up close. Oh my, I love the gold. I really wanted gold accents and this is the Oh, that's so satisfying. It's very satisfying. Oh my word. This is gorgeous. Wasn't that fun? Okay, so <laughs> my camera was not working. I actually fixed the lens since then. So it's really nice that I can show you in really pretty daylight and with a lens that is correctly working. It is the 90th anniversary Mita Sanshodo limited fountain pen. Uh, the color is called Earth of water race. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. Waterous, water race. I don't know. It looks like tortoiseshell to me. That's a capless. It's a fine nib and it's, I got mine on eBay from Japan and it took a little bit to get to me, but I feel like this is going a bit warm. Hold on. Okay. I think that's better. Yeah. This is much better. I think. So capless meaning there's no cap. Normally you have with your fountain pens, you have a cap, right? And you take the cap off, you post it, you ride. It helps the weight of the pen. It feels nice. And then you put it back on, blah, blah, blah. What I have found with capped pens is I accidentally mark my beautiful leather covers. So with the capless pen, um, even with my gel pens, I went from whatever the, the capped version of this is to this, what do they call it? RT1. So it's basically you can click, 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 the clicker version. And then this one, this capless, this vanishing point, because the point vanishes in there all cool. And I know a billion people have shown this, but Let's try. There's a little trap trap door. Can you see it? Maybe it won't work. Is it too close? Okay. See, there's like a little, there's like a little trappy door. Do you see that? And then the, the, the nib pops out of the little trap door to keep the ink. So the ink doesn't dry off on the, the point of the nib. I am really excited to have this pen because it's my only vanishing point capless, whatever you want to call it. And it's the decimo body style. So there is like a normal vanishing point, but it's a little bit girthier. And I really wanted to have something very comparable to this pen. And it's 
it's almost the same. I think I looked up the specs and it was like, I don't know, it was pretty much the same uh, circumference. Is that what you call it? Now the issue with this pen is some people have is that the, what is this thing? The clip is on the end where your nib comes out. So it, you might have issues writing with it, with it being on the end. But I was practicing on all sorts of different pens, like what it would feel like having my finger on a clip. I practiced on a bunch of different pens and to see what I thought. Yeah, so this is the capless vanishing point. And it's smooth as butter. What do they do? They usually just write down, oh, my battery's dying, okay. This is, is that the closest I can get in? Yeah, sorry y'all, it's the closest I can get in with this lens. But this is a fine nib and I have the Diatromus or whatever, the document black ink, which I'm really enjoying. You know, I'm normally a noodler's Lexington gray gal, but I really, really like this black ink. My, a lot of my tastes have changed actually. For instance, I got, I love, 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 love Twisby. Look at this gorgeous Twisby. It's white with rose gold and it's got a rose gold nib. This is extra fine. And I feel like sometimes I go to this, especially with journaling because the only, th oh, I'll have to show you with this. I just went on a bunny trail and stopped myself, but this is a Twisby. Um, I think it's the, what is it? The Eco or something. It's a lot finer to me than this one. And sometimes I reach for this one because it feels finer. So all that to say, look at the ink capacity on that Twisby. I love, love, love Twisby because I'm such a big writer. Um, I have the yellow one and the blue one. I actually might sell um, both of these for sure. I'm going to be selling the yellow one. These are the Lamy, Lamy, whatever you call them. These ones I'm going to be selling. Probably flush them all out, like, you know, get them all cleaned up and everything. So I think for sure I'm going to be selling these ones. I don't think I'm going to sell this Lamy. It's the, it's the pretty mint color. It's also an extra fine. Isn't that weird though? Like look at this extra fine Lamy compared to an extra fine Twisby. This is crazy. Isn't that nuts? So each pen is going to function differently. So I think what I wanna do, oh, oh, <clears throat> and this is my Pilot Falcon. It is a 18 karat soft fine. It's got flex. I'm gonna flex for you. Oh my gosh, the planes. Oh, you can't wish you could see this closer up. Let me see. See that? It flexes. This was my most expensive pen for the longest time. How is that doing on the other side there? I don't know what ink I have in this one. I think it's like a bluish ink. I'm not sure, but I really do like that flex nib, soft, fine, but it's still not like super fine in my opinion. I like a fine line and this is again the Pilot Falcon. So I think in my collection, I'm just gonna keep these. I'm pretty sure I still haven't decided on the blue Twisby because it's pretty, but I really love this. I just love the simplicity of the the white with the rose gold. But I think that's a nice little collection right here. And I'm trying to just clear stuff out and uh, get more organized, not have so much stuff. I am just absolutely loving this extra fine nib on this particular Twisby. But what I wanted to say though, was that the ink capacity on this capless is not a lot. I would show you on this converter, but it would get ink everywhere. It is not, you can't see, but this thing's only like, like this big. It's like a tiny bit of ink capacity. Now I did get a empty cartridge to fill and be able to put in here instead of the converter, which I might do, but you have to fill this one up a lot more often and that's annoying to me. So that's why I really love the Twisbees is because, you know, it's got the awesome ink capacity. This is just the coolest pen. I'm so excited to have this in my collection. Several people have asked me like where they are and I think there might be one or two still out there for sale. I went on eBay and it's getting harder and harder to find this color. There's a blue one that's got the modeled whatever. Um, that one's every, everywhere on eBay, but this brown, this like goldy brown color, 
that is getting harder and harder to find. I am going to probably buy the extra fine nib unit for this. Like I said before, so many people was like, oh, it's scratchy, you won't like it, it's scratchy. And I'm like, well, I guess it's relative because this Twisby, it has some tooth to it. And I don't mind that. I'm used to the tooth. And this one is just so smooth, which is great. I love a smooth nib. I don't want like it, you know, piercing through the paper. But I do think I am curious what the extra fine would feel like. And the beauty about this Decimo style pen is you can buy the nib unit for, I think you can do the vanishing point. It works for the vanishing point, the regular version as well. But you can buy the nib unit and then play around with different sizes. The only unfortunate thing is that they do not have obviously a 14 karat gold nib and an extra fine. So I'm going to have to purchase like the black or have like the whole silver two-tone thing. I'm leaning towards black. Had the thought yesterday, like, what if I did do silver? What would that look like? Would that be just like so faux pas? I don't know. Yeah, I definitely want to try the finer line. They say it's super fine. And then the gal that that did it before me, she loves it. She's also a very fine, fine, fine person. And I'm used to writing with a 0 0.38. Martha Plans is the one who really helped me. And she did an example of this fine nib with a micron, I think 0.5, which is perfect. She's right, it's exactly what it is. Um, but I just think for what I want, I think I wanna go even thinner, so. See, I feel like the Twisby is more like my 0.38. But anyway, don't want to gab your ear off. I just wanted to show you my pretty pen. It's so pretty. I hope you enjoyed this video, especially for people who are drooling for one of these and have not, I was not able to see any close-ups of this pen really on YouTube. So I really wanted to make that available because I don't know, I think it, it, it helps when you can see it. Uh, it is a smooth writer. It is a beautiful, smooth writer. I do not regret it at all purchasing this pen. Um, it's mi precioso. Even if I had to have just like three pens, then this would be, those would be good for me. <laughs> I'll keep the Lamy for like sentimental sake and they're really cheap. And I might keep this one, I'm not sure. I still don't know. they would be a lot cheaper when I sell though because I don't know how in the world. Diedrich probably batted this off a table or something. Thanks all so much for hanging out with me today. I am so appreciative of you. If you like this video, I'm gonna do the whole thing. I'm gonna do it. Hit like and maybe subscribe if you want to. <laughs> if you want to see some other videos, I do planning and journaling and art and blog and all sorts of stuff on this channel. So maybe we can be friends. I'll see you soon in the next video. Bye.